Hi there, and welcome to Tuk Tuk's Trinkets and Terrain. My name is David, and along with the moral support of this channel's namesake, my dog Tucker, uh, I will be showing you how I created a Glothias tree. Recently, I ran the Sunless Citadel adventure for my players, and I wanted a good centerpiece for the final showdown. I think it turned out pretty good, and I hope you think so too. So like any good tree project, it starts out with a uh, paper towel roll. Uh, and then for the texture of the tree, uh, I'm going to use this hemp twine. Uh, I didn't end up using the cotton twine there, it ended up being too thin. Uh, but my idea for this was to use this twine to make the tree look like it was a huge mass of vines all twisted and woven together. So I took the twine, uh, cut lengths of it. Uh, about the size of the trunk. I uh, needed a bunch of these so I pretty much used everything I had. I set that aside and then I used some hot glue to strengthen this paper towel roll so it was easier to work with. Uh, it was kind of spongy so um, the hot glue made it nice and stiff so could uh, glue stuff down. Then I took the twine, grabbed three or four uh, pieces at a time uh, and then just hot glue these to the trunk. Uh, be careful with hot glue as it is hot. I was using a low temperature setting so that I could push the twine down onto the trunk itself. But um, as I laid these down I did my best to maximize coverage and randomness of the twine to make it look like the vines were all woven together. and then just glued the twine down along the trunk. And then just repeat that process uh, to cover the trunk. I ended up running out of this thicker twine. I underestimated how much twine I was going to need for this uh, tree. So I ended up having to go buy some more. I couldn't find the exact type that I had here. Uh, and I ended up finding a much thinner one. So this is that new twine that I ended up buying. Um, as you can see, it's much thinner, so I ended up having to cover all of the work that I already did, uh, which meant that that was a huge waste of time, but didn't expect to not be able to find the thicker twine. As you can see, it looked pretty funky with the two types of twine on there, so I covered all the old stuff, and this is what I ended up with. I thought I might need some weight for the trunk here, so I ended up gluing these beads in the bottom. Uh, they ended up not being necessary in the slightest. Um, once the whole tree is complete it weighs quite a bit. Uh, then I just glued the whole thing down to some chipboard here. The roots themselves uh, are just aluminum foil all scrunched up to make the bulk of it. I wasn't too concerned about accuracy in terms of looking like an actual tree. Uh, this is a unnatural tree after all. So the roots themselves are pretty large, uh, but just scrunch that down into a random shape. Glued that on with some hot glue. So I didn't want the roots breaking off, so I ended up rebasing the whole thing on this bigger chipboard here. And then it's the same process as the trunk, just cut a bunch of lengths of twine to fit and hot glue them to the roots. I did my best to still make it random and weave them into the trunk pieces, as you can see here. 
After I had glued down all of the twine for the roots, I cut away all of the chipboard that wasn't directly underneath the roots. Uh, so this way the tree could be placed on any terrain, uh, anywhere, any type of terrain, and still work. Uh, now for the branches. Uh, I was found this copper wire from a really old project. I wouldn't recommend using this as it is pretty expensive. Uh, really any thicker gauge wire will do. Uh, or just aluminum foil. Uh, I wanted the sturdiness, so I cut a few pieces out and then bulked them out with some aluminum foil to shape the branches. And same process, lots of twine all woven together. And then I made some smaller branches out of just aluminum foil and twine. Uh, so they were just some variation in the branch size. And then poked a hole in the trunk here and with some hot glue, glued the branches on. And I intentionally left the overhang there of the the pieces of twine so that I could weave those into the trunk once the branch is attached. Uh, I ended up running out of twine again, um, so there's a lot less branches here than I would have liked. I wasn't able to go out and get some more twine, uh, so I ended up just using what I had. And then here you can see I took all the extra twine bits and wove them into the trunk so it looks incorporated. Uh, there is a lot of hot glue on this, so I use the tip of the hot glue gun to remelt the glue, smooth it out, uh, fill in some gaps where there wasn't twine covering the uh, paper towel roll or aluminum foil, which will get covered with paint later, so it won't look like hot glue. And then here at the top of the tree, um, after attaching some more branches, I needed to cover the bits where they come together. Uh, so with some hot glue, uh, I trimmed some of the scissors, and then I ended up just covering the entire thing with some extra twine that was left over, uh, just a few extra pieces that weren't enough for the branches. You can see here, put some hot glue on and then just cover the whole thing with uh, the leftover twine. And then again, went over the whole thing with the hot glue gun, smoothed out any uh, hot glue that looked funky. Uh, after a solid base coat in black, I just used some cheap spray paint. Uh, I'm going to coat the whole thing in a dark brown with this cheap paintbrush. Uh, I wasn't too careful here. I watered it down. Um, so there, I left some black spots, but got most of it. I'd say like a 95% coverage uh, with this cheap acrylic paint. And then grab a smaller brush to sort of fill in any random spots that were a bit too egregious with a uh, missing paint. And after that was all dry, I grabbed a makeup brush that I use for dry brushing. And then this is a khaki or a tan. Uh, I did a pretty heavy dry brush with this to give the tree more of a dead look. After the tan dried, I did another dry brush with a light gray, um, a lot less coverage this time, just to give it some more definition, bring out the uh, raised features a little bit more, and again, lean into that dead look. Uh, and then this is a pretty brown wash. It's very light in terms of pigment. I just used some cheap acrylic paint and water and then a tiny bit of uh, dishwasher flow aid. Um, this was intended to just bring back some of the brown color uh, but leave all of the lighter highlights. Uh, 
And I really just slathered it on, making sure to get uh, everywhere so that the paint would settle into the uh, deeper recesses of the uh, texture between the pieces of twine. So I didn't really like how this was turning out. I wanted to make a little bit more evil looking. So I mixed up this uh, red wash. And essentially I'm just going to take this and get as much as I can onto the brush and just let it drip onto the tree, uh, letting gravity do all of the work uh, with the intention of making it look like the tree is maybe oozing or bleeding. One thing I do wish I had done differently was add a gloss to the red wash to make it look like the tree was actively oozing. Uh, when it's dry it looks like a bit too stale, uh, but in the end it still turns out pretty good. Overall I do really like how the Gulthai tree turned out. Uh, you can see how using the twine really makes it look like a bunch of individual pieces all woven together into one cohesive tree. Uh, thanks for stopping by this first episode of Tuk Tuk's Trinkets and Terrain. Uh, I'm going to be posting videos once a month on the first of the month. So um, subscribe if you want to see more.